डॉक्टर अपूर मेरा विद दी मैन डॉक्टर शैलेश भाई एंड इट हैज़ बीन अ डिलइट वर्किंग विद हिम फॉर लास्ट एटीन मंथ्स एंड वॉट वी हैव ऑब्जर्व इज दैट इफ यू लव समथिंग राइट इट रिफ्लेक्ट्स इन योर बॉडी लैंग्वेज इन योर वर्क बट आई थिंक द नेक्स्ट लेवल ऑफ लव इज पैशन and he is so passionate about trauma that i have this question in my heart i've been asked by a lot of orthopedicians what is a speciality i should opt for where you have least competition and friends this statement might shock you every city in the world needs a good trauma center and a fantastic trauma surgeon like the man sitting next to me if you really want good bulk good name a lot of work and things associated with it become a trauma specialist there are some areas in trauma which are worth mentioning the periarticular fractures and the pelvic vestibular region further super specialize into it i have question number 1 from dr shailesh bhai sir why trauma sir? in the world of scopy and arthroplasty why trauma sir um thank you dr apoor for first hosting me and uh, then giving a great compliment that uh, my work has been recognized so yes i very well agree with the statement that you just made that this country and this world does require a good trauma center in each of the cities or even towns because no matter where you go accidents are very common with the with the uh, roads that we have and the infrastructures that we have we are pretty sure that it's only going to increase and never decrease and trauma is one such thing where if the patient meets with an accident it is definite that he will go to the nearest hospital available and he will not plan his journey to reach a remote place which is very far away so trauma centers are required and more importantly trauma surgeons most fractures does not require great skills but like you just pointed out there are enough fractures like periarticular fractures periarticular uh, periarticular fractures and even complex fractures that does require skills and expertise uh, to be able to perform so that the patients do well and if you ask why trauma with number 1 the patient load number 2 most importantly each patient will have a different type of a fracture i have hardly come across two patients who have a very similar fracture even if they do pretty sure that the way they behave the way they end up is going to be different so each day is going to be something different something challenging it is never going to be monotonous one thing that you can ask any of our sportsmen and colleagues or even plastic colleagues is after a certain period of time they feel their work is monotonous because nothing challenging comes to them it is no more interesting but you ask a trauma surgeon any fracture that comes requires a certain set of skills it requires a certain set of planning so your mind is active also your body is active so this i feel is the biggest boon to any orthopedic surgeon who wants to specialize in trauma that you will never have a dull day in your life right so it keeps you on your toes your socks all over is pulled up and you evaluate your patient what is to be done many a times you discuss with your peers there's a good scope of teaching a lot of people from the place that you come the institute that you work at in mangalore there's a lot of trauma work going on and uh, dr shailesh bai also has the largest series in the world of the locking nails of humerus and uh, we are very happy that is an indian to route our map in the world at a stage where we all talk about people from different countries and their examples and i wish sir the amount of patients we have if we really are able to do optimum trauma management at least in this section we can be the world leaders very rightly said uh, dr apur i had been uh, to fellowship to leeds 
and trust me there is no trauma work even though leeds is considered to be one of the pioneer trauma centers in uk in fact so much so you speak to any surgeon in uh, uk or most of the european countries they are astonished as to the amount of trauma loads that we have in our country in the eastern countries as such including india maybe thailand and china so in fact a stage has come where the surgeons from there will be visiting us to learn the skills of trauma and it is not going to be the other way around so any any hospital any institute in this country if they are running well they will have enough at their hands to be able to learn the entire spectrum of trauma plus teach the world how it has to be done so i'm pretty sure in next say maybe a decade we will be the world leaders in trying to proclaim what is the best to be done for any any scenario of trauma that we have in our patients right one more thing that, that trauma surgeon requires follow the principles of abc of practice availability as he said trauma patient is not going to wait so you have to be ready to be available behavior it has set of complications which you need to understand and explain and third is competency as explained there is a skill required in clinical practice each one of us need to understand trauma because no body can practice any super specialty or sub specialty without having optimum trauma assessment and management so according to me trauma is like salt in the food you need to have it there is minimum amount of trauma we all need to learn bone handling every orthopedic surgeon can do what i feel a good trauma surgeon a specialist scores better in the soft tissue handling your thoughts sir as an orthopedic surgeon we need to understand that bone is a living tissue and whatever the end result is going to happen happens totally because of how we handle the soft tissues so yes very true that not necessarily only as a trauma surgeon but as an orthopedic surgeon we need to respect the soft tissues and take appropriate care of it unfortunately uh, in many of the centers we do see that an open injury debridement is done by the junior most surgeon or even the resident who is actually not trained to handle a scena- such a scenario it is considered a junior level job whereas in fact it should be done by the senior most surgeon because the entire outcome is going to depend on how well the first debridement is done and that is the best time that is the so called golden hour also the golden time frame during which any surgeon can do what is required to be done and if not done the end result will be disastrous the bones no matter how we handle will heal or at the most it will mal unite or even in those rare scenarios it goes into non union there are enough ways to overcome this and make the bone heal whereas if the soft tissue does not heal in the way it requires it causes infection it can cause disastrous complication like the entire flap can get necrosed this also leads to the bone not getting healing so it will lead to an infected non union which is the biggest headache any in an orthopedic surgeon should face so as surgeons and as orthopedic surgeons we need to pay the biggest respect to the soft tissues it does not matter how big our incisions are but what matters is what footprint we leave on the soft tissues that we are handling so our footprint on the soft tissues should reduce because all the soft tissues are invariably damaged due to the trauma we should not add to the insult that is already occurred on these soft tissues so our handling and our debridement all these decide on how the patient will have what type of limb at the end of uh, say 3 or 4 months as they classically say whatever sir has achieved at such a young age is something if not impossible but definitely challenging i have observed him for this period of time and what i discover in him is he is ever ready there is no word called as no 
in his dictionary. He is open to ideas. When I asked him to travel to Delhi to record integrated lectures on trauma with the senior faculties, his answer was, yes, let's do it. And I'm sure those lectures in conceptual orthopedics is going to open your doors to a new world of experience with latest, a balanced approach. And one thing which is forever common, the principles, they don't change. The technology might upgrade a breast, but if the principles are correct, if you understand what he said, handle the soft issues well. I'm sure all the senior teachers would have mentioned the same thing. It cannot change. Plus, there is a passion in him. Right? His eyes will lit up when you talk about fractures which are difficult. This passion almost has to border at the boundary of being crazy about achieving something big. Develop these qualities. If you reject everything that comes in the path of the best, you become the best. Remember this rule. And imagine, you are coming from a town or a city. Imagine, why not open a trauma center there? This at this stage of your life may appear like a big dream. But why not to build castles in the air? We can lead lay down the foundations beneath them step by step. Start dreaming because if not you, then who is the question. And there's a classical line sir in Hindi which says Har tab hoti hai jab maan liya jata hai Jeet tab hoti hai jab thaan liya jata hai This is what I always believe. Friends, listen to this man with a new set of videos which we'll be releasing over the next two to three months. And I'm sure you yourself will think about taking this brand seriously because like him, you will be in love with trauma forever. This is Dr. Apoor Mehra and thank you Dr. Shalish Paisar. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.